purpose of this training at BRNC is to prepare us to become Royal Navy officers who are fit to serve in the fleet. As an officer, you'll be a leader, so it's trying to give you all the skills to be able to do that job. Anyone who wants to have an exciting, out of the ordinary type of career, the Navy will provide you the facilities, provide you the opportunities, and really allows you to maximise those. I wanted to join the Navy since I was a kid, have a long-term career that was going to fill everything that I wanted to do. I wanted to do something that was challenging. I always knew that like a nine-to-five just wasn't for me. Whereas in the Navy, you get to experience things completely different. You get to get out there, see the world. I wanted to do something that I could look back on in years to come and think that was really worthwhile doing. I think there's no cookie-cutter officer cadet. Everyone here is from a different background, a different walk of life. Prior to joining the Navy, I was a doctor and I was working in the NHS. I worked for a year in the civil service. It didn't quite scratch the itch. Before I joined, I was a waitress. I was actually a waiter as well. I joined the Navy because um, I want to be the best pilot. I want to be able to travel while I'm doing my job, and the Navy gives that opportunity to broaden your horizons. I work as a doctor, but I came to the UK when I was a child as a refugee with my family. It's just an honour to be able to look after the men and women that take care of this country. We've basically taken this disparate group of people from around the country and we mashed them into one team. The first term is very much looking at militarising. We've made them think and act a little bit like people in the armed forces. We've introduced them to how military leadership is conducted in the Navy. So sort of the key parts of phase one training, we've done a week of IMF, which is initial military fitness, so getting in the gym with the PTIs, rope climbing, press ups, all that good stuff. The training they receive makes sure that when they join their next units, so for example, if they join a ship, they're ready and physically robust to deal with that for their own safety and also personnel on board they work with. I looked at a task such as going on the high ropes and I would have said before I joined the Navy, absolutely not. The fact that I went so far out of my comfort zone so early on in the process was really rewarding for me. Well, you'd be amazed how much you can fit into the day. Learning there are two six o'clocks in the day has been a rude awakening. So today we woke up at 5am because <laughs> we had period zero. So that was a 5k run around the college with webbing and day sacks. How was that? <laughs> Agonising. I think it's a two-tiered approach. You've got the physical and you've got the mind. They try and develop in you both ways. We've had lectures on teamwork abilities, being a competent leader, but this has just as much of an influence. And you've got to be at the front to lead, haven't you? We were learning about the theory of command, leadership and management. They're the three pillars of what makes an officer. It's really important that we lay the foundations for that at the very start of our naval career. The overall point of Dartmouth is to develop us as leaders. So if we can understand the theory, it'd be far easier for us to apply that in a more realistic environment. Rounds are at eight o'clock every evening and officers inspect your kit and your room, making sure it's up to standard. The idea is to stick to that attention to detail, to not just look after yourself, but to look after everyone else. And I think that translates further within the fleet and within the Navy. We did a week weapons handling, getting on the ranges with Royal Marines, which is great fun. With the rifle training, we've just been learning how to strip it down, how to put it back together, how to clean it. We also had ceremonial training. The marching is just simple foot drill at the minute, so static drill as well as marching. We've also been very hard pushed on time management. It's got to be five minutes before a timing every time. Sometimes they give you less time than is possible just to make you move at a rush. This training over these past five weeks is building towards Exercise Havoc, which is essentially what it is on the tin. It's a bit of a chaotic day. We have to be in different places at different times in different rigs. I was chosen to be the class leader for Exercise Havoc, which means you take overall responsibility for your division. That was quite exciting for me because it was an entirely new experience as someone who hasn't done military stuff before. Once you've got past the challenges, you can look back and go, yeah, I did that, my team got through that, and we've gotten closer as a team because of that. When you finish Havoc, the, the feeling is indescribable. You're on top of the world. Everyone's pulled through it together. You're all so proud of each other. And that is the best thing about being here. It's being here with everyone else. Mainly I'm looking forward to Exercise ABLE, which is an exercise out in Dartmoor. And I think it'll be a good opportunity to put to the test everything we've been taught so far. It's one of those exercises that everyone kind of has a little bit of fear about. 
It's going off to Dartmoor, it's going into the unknown, it's being in an environment which you're not necessarily used to. You don't get very much sleep, a lot is expected of you, and also the weather on Dartmoor is never ever good. The most proud moment for me was finishing our assessed basic leadership exercise. Finding out that I'd passed that was a huge weight off my shoulders. Now that they've met the initial standard that we expect of kind of anyone in the armed forces, we've kind of got that foundation. We introduce them more to the maritime aspect, so we call it the marinization term. We send them to sea for up to 10 weeks. They go and see what an operational warship is like. They get to implement all the leadership skills they've learned in the first term in the maritime environment. So they get down onto the river a lot and they do what's called the maritime leadership exercise. And that really puts everything they've learned together um, out on the river, demonstrating that they've achieved the standard required. Down on the river, we get taught to drive boats and do seamanship, so sort of our knot tying and the theoretical side of, of what happens on a ship. It's not just all PowerPoints and lectures. You really get to see it happening for real, because it's just something you wouldn't get in any other job. I'm looking forward to initial sea time, getting on board, seeing what life in the Navy is actually all about. There's a rumour that we're going to be on the Prince of Wales, getting to go on the carrier. Brand new ship, it would be really awesome to start to see the world and you haven't even passed out of here yet. Marl is a four or five day assessment that takes place mainly down here on the River Dart, but also up and around the college grounds in which we get put through a series of practical leadership tasks over two hours involving small teams of up to about a dozen multiple boats of different sizes. Putting all the work I've spent over the last 26, 27 weeks, finally actually being able to display that on a maritime environment, it's been really satisfying. I'm most proud of passing out of the college. When I stood on the parade ground, it brought me to tears. I was proud of everyone around me, my colleagues, because they had gone through the same thing. It's a really proud moment to stand in front of this lovely building with all the memories and the friends I'd made here and thinking ahead of what was coming. My aspirations for my career in the Royal Navy are to get to see as much as possible really, travel the world and then eventually command my own warship is the plan. I've joined up as a warfare officer. I'm intending to go submariner, so I'm looking towards becoming a navigator on board submarines. I hope to join a submarine service as a weapon engineer officer actually training on the helicopters I'll be going out to the front line on. I mean, it's a couple of years down the line for me, but that moment will be pretty special. I've had so much fun in the past weeks just because of the people. I think the people in the Navy are the best in the world and you don't find them anywhere else. Cohesion as a division, and especially in our room as well, is very high. Well, it's dead difficult not to get on when we're literally living on top of each other. <laughs> for me, it's the mates. You know, we've been yeah. here four or five weeks. The friendships you build within that time, it's, it's crazy. The quote we use quite often is, you've got to laugh because otherwise you'll be crying. And that is just so true. There's a lot of times where you just got to battle through it and just have a laugh and tell each other jokes. We're not here for like an easy ride and stuff and we want to do something special. I mean, I, I know I definitely want to be proud of what I eventually do. And I feel like that's what we're all here for. <laughs>